let us now discuss about the next application of conductance measurement which is uh, conductor metric titration so i know that you all know about titrations uh, mainly the acid base titrations uh, which, uh, which is you know we did in our laboratory to find out the end point okay but that acid base titration normal what we did in the titration we basically uh, use uh, some indicator okay some indicator to get the <clears throat> end point okay <clears throat> excuse me but in this um, conductor metric titration uh, instead of the indicator we're going to use an electrode or we're going to use actually uh, the conductance value or the um, conductivity value of uh, that uh, solution uh, and by using that uh, you know uh, data that means the conductance data and analyzing that data and plotting that data uh, we can calculate the end point okay of that acid base neutralizer reaction so the basic actually the motivation of uh, this uh, conductor metric titration is actually coming from the basic idea of uh, electrochemistry so which is actually the electrical conductance electrical conductance actually the electrical conductance is depends upon mainly two factors okay the first one is how many numbers are numbers of ions are present in the solution that means the electrolytic solution and the second one is the their mobility that means the speed of the ions which are present in that solution okay so that means the electrical conductance will going to depend upon mainly two factors the first factor is the number of ions present in the electrolytic solution electrolytic solution and the second one is <clears throat> speed of uh, the ions which are present in the electrolytic solutions or what we can say we can say the mobility of ion okay mobility of the ions present in that solution or electrolytic solution okay so what is mobility mobility is actually the speed of ions uh, you know uh, per uh, applied potential gradient okay so that means actually speed of the that ions divided by the potential gradient potential gradient so potential what is potential gradient actually potential gradient is actually the unit is volt per meter okay not volt okay so this is actually your mobility so for mobility of cation the speed of cation okay divided by potential gradient that means the applied potential gradient this is your applied potential gradient okay so the basic concept is this one that means the electrical conductance of uh, you know of a solution will going to depends upon mainly two factors the first factor is your number of ions present in that electrolytic solutions and the second factor is the mobility of the ions present in that solution okay that means the mobility of these ions <clears throat> so this is your basic this concept we will going to use to determine the uh, uh, so actually from this concept what you understand we understand that the electrical conductance is depends upon these two factors okay so uh, if you consider a titration process okay let's suppose here in normal titration okay let's suppose we uh, in a normal titration what we use we use a conical flux okay and in that collocate flux we normally use some sometime we can we may use acid or we may even use base okay let's suppose we add 
some acid we take some acid here let suppose hcl okay <clears throat> and here from the let's suppose here it is your beaker or not beaker sorry this is your bullet okay so let's suppose here we are taking some sodium hydroxide okay so <clears throat> when uh here in the acid that means in the conical flux acids are there that means hcl are there that means hcl will be in the form of what is positive h here negative ion okay so uh, in normal acid uh, based titration, we add some phenol tannin here, okay, or some uh, indicator. So let's suppose phenol tannin we add here, okay. So in the acidic medium, it is not going to give any color, but when we add sodium hydroxide, uh, you know, after the end point, that means after uh, when it will going to it will going to react with that uh, HCl and it will going to form a salt and water, okay, and when the neutralization is over, uh, the additional um, uh, addition uh, that means the additional drop of the sodium hydroxide is going to make this solution basic in nature. Okay, and we know that in basic nature the phenolphthalein is going to show pink color. Okay, but this is your normal um, acid-base titration. Okay, by using indicator, by using indicator we can uh, detect that endpoint. Understand? No? so i think uh, you all know about this one but now if you compare this one with the uh, conductor metric titration it will be like the setup will be uh, almost similar but uh, the difference is that in, in place of the indicator we are going to use some uh, electrodes actually to calculate the conductivity of that solution because here we are going to mainly going to calculate the conductivity okay because when we will going to add the sodium hydroxide then that sodium hydroxide will go to consume um, actually the waste part of that sodium hydroxide will going to consume some is positive and they will going to form what water okay <coughs> excuse me and, and since is positive will going to consume by that always negative that means the number of is positive will going to decrease and actually this is positive uh, uh, actually this uh, you know this decrease of the number number of is positive will going to affect the conductivity of the solution okay so uh, and that actually actually this is actually the key point okay the you know decrease of the conductivity because of the addition of that uh, sodium hydroxide is the key point in the electrolytic uh, or electro uh, that means actually the conductor metric titration okay this is the key point for the conductor metric titration okay so now let us <coughs> compare this uh, normal acid based titration with uh, our um, that uh, that uh, you know the conductor metric titration so it is your conductor metric titration setup okay conduct conductor metric conductor matrix titration titration setup so this is let's suppose setup okay so this is your mm, normal acid based titration okay setup so here uh, we normally use a beaker uh, here okay we use a beaker and uh, here in the buret we, we we may use uh, uh, this or we may use acid but uh, normally we use base th that means the alkali alkali uh, in that uh, buret and in the beaker what we use we use the acid here okay we use here the acid acid solution okay and here the alkali solution so to detect the conductivity of this solution uh, that means uh, we uh, actually here what we use we use indicator not to get the endpoint but here we cannot uh, we actually use what the conductance value no? we use the conductance value to measure the uh, endpoint so to get that conductance value that means conductivity we are going to use an electrode okay an electrode and by using that electrode we can measure the we can measure the conductivity value of uh, that solution okay 
so basically uh, you know this is an instrument this is an instrument uh, which uh, which has uh, you know one digital display uh, in which we can get the, the conductivity value okay uh, sometimes you can get it uh, the you can get the specific conductance and or even you can get the um, resistance value also okay so coming to the electrode part this, this is the electrode now by using which we can calculate the conductivity of this uh, solution but here actually if you focus on this uh, electrode or uh, the part of that electrode which is you know which is inside that solution which is actually composed of two electrodes okay two electrodes it is actually composed of two electrodes which is two plates of electrodes actually okay two similar plates okay same having same area so the area of this one is let's suppose a and the area of this one is also a okay so these two electrodes are connected by two wires and this actually this wire these two wire go, uh, will go to that instrument and okay so this is your two electrodes actually here actually in this part two electrodes will be there okay two plates will be there so this part is actually this two uh if you zoom this one then you will going to get this type of uh, you can see two elect uh, two plates okay like this one so and for one particular electrodes uh, they have a, a specific uh, area and the area of the, the one plate will be similar to that other and also uh, usually okay usually similar to that of other and uh, the distance between these two electrodes is let's suppose l then we can calculate the cell constant for this electrode okay so for for uh, we know that the cell constant is equal to cell constant is equal to l by a okay so l by a that means the length between uh, that means that uh, length which is your the difference between that means the distance between these two electrodes which is l that is the length and the area of the electrodes okay so it is your the unit maybe meter inverse or maybe you can express the unit in centimeter inverse also okay excuse me so <coughs> excuse me <coughs> so up to this i think you understand that uh, the electrode is composed of two parallel plate actually okay and uh, they actually they have for a particular electrode they have a fixed uh, you know um, cell constant so the cell constant is ex actually if you noticed any uh, electrode then you able to uh, find the cell constant on that uh, which, is, which will be written actually which is written on that electrode okay it will be written here it will be written that like cell constant is equal to something sometimes 0.9 sometimes 1 like that centimeter inverse okay so it is depends upon that electrode actually okay depend upon depending upon the distance between these two that means the uh, distance between these two electrodes okay, and uh, the area okay so now up to this you understand and uh, here uh, by using uh, by uh, actually this part will be what always remember that when we will going to do that experiment the this two plate must be uh, inside that solution okay otherwise you will not going to get the proper result okay so suppose uh, here uh, in this part uh, we're going to add acid huh? and here we're going to uh, take uh, alkali in the burette and uh, we will going to uh, add drop wise the alkali from that burette to that solution okay so interestingly uh, actually you have to be careful uh, you know to measure when we, when you're going to measure or when you're going to uh, take the reading then you have to be careful okay so after adding uh, each drop of uh, uh, that uh, you know alkali uh, solution from that burette to that beaker you have to mix 
the solution properly such that the solution will become homogeneous in nature because maybe you, you know when you uh, add a drop of alkali in in this part in this region maybe this will going to neutralize you know localize it maybe localize it or this drop will going to only neutralize this part only okay so that means the ps of this part will not be similar to this part or the concentration of this part will not become same to the concentration concentration of this part or this part also okay so the concentration to to uh, you know to uh, to uh, to make it homogeneous that means to make the concentration equal you have to mix it properly okay such that the concentration of this part is equal to the concentration of the solution which are inside this cell that means in this part okay such that we are going to get uh, a proper uh, result which is less error okay which have which has less error understand so when you eat a drop from that burette then you have to mix it properly then you have to wait okay wait for you have to wait for one or two minutes okay one or two minutes then you can set the reading okay and you can record the reading in your uh, in a copy or notebook so this is your setup and this is the um, procedure by using which you can uh, actually uh, you know get the values or data but now we have the data so we have to analyze the data okay after getting the data so uh, after getting the data what we will have to do we have to plot a graph okay a curve of conductance conductance t and c okay conductance and the volume of added alkali okay <clears throat> so we have to plot it a uh, graph okay then by uh, using that plot or by analyzing that plot we can get the endpoint so how to uh, analyze this point oh, sorry how to analyze this uh, graph uh, for different uh, types of uh, you know conductor metric titrations we're going to discuss in details okay so mainly there are uh, many types of conductor metric titrations are there so mainly you know uh, the titrations between actually the AC, actually it, it will depends upon the uh, nature or type of actually it will actually depends upon the strength of the acid and bases okay so the first one is actually the titrations between the strong acid with strong base the second one is your okay weak acid with strong base and the third one is the mixer of strong acid and weak base uh, sorry strong acid and uh, weak acid with uh, strong base okay so this three we will going to and the final one is weak uh, no sorry uh, strong acid with weak base okay so this four we will to discuss and uh, then we will going to uh, we will going to uh, discuss about a new actually types of conductor metric titration which is actually precipitation titration okay so first of all we're going to discuss about uh, uh, conductor metric titrations of strong acid strong acid with strong base strong base or strong alkali you can say alkali okay <coughs> Okay, so <clears throat> when we are um, talking about you know strong acid and strong alkali so normally uh, normally you know when we are talking about a strong acid that it, it may be any strong acid okay so let's just suppose HCl okay HCl as a strong acid and strong alkali let's suppose sodium hydroxide okay so sodium hydroxide is a strong base or strong alkali and here is silicon and uh, strong acid so let us discuss about the reaction between HCl and sodium hydroxide and the uh, uh, use of that conductor metric titration to detect their neutralization point okay okay so let us discuss about the first one which is the 
uh, strong acid with strong base okay so we have already uh, said that uh, the acid will be your HCl and the base is your sodium hydroxide okay so we're going to do the titration between a strong acid which is HCl and a strong base which is your sodium hydroxide okay so in the beaker we're going to take in the beaker we're going to take acid that means HCl so let us suppose here the acid will be there now let's suppose is positive one two three okay one two three okay so so HCl will be in the form of uh, their ions okay because this is strong acid so we know that uh, strong acid and strong base and also the salt so always remember that strong acid strong base strong base and salt all salt okay they will going to completely dissociate it into their ion completely dissociated into their ions in in aqueous solution okay so that means in their aqueous solution they will going to form their respective uh, ions or they will going to complete dissociate into their ions okay so let us suppose this is your acid is taken in uh, the beaker and here from the burette you will going to add the sodium hydroxide okay sodium hydroxide is also in this uh, in the beaker it will be in the form of what because this is a strong acid uh, oh, sorry base so it will be in the form of ions that means sodium positive and OS negative so that means if you <coughs> try to uh, or or we can represent the reaction between the sodium hydroxide and HCl like this one okay H positive will be going to this is aqueous plus Cl negative aqueous of so this form acid huh? plus sodium positive aqueous plus OH negative which is also aqueous so <coughs> excuse me <coughs> so we uh, we put the sodium and OH negative in a square bracket because to represent that this is inside the B rate okay just to indicate okay now they will going to react with each other okay so uh, this OS will going to react with the is positive and it will going to form one water and this sodium will going to react with chloride and it will go, they will going to give that salt sodium chloride but we know that salt, any salt will again going to dissociate into their ions so that means that salt will also will be in the form of what in the form of their ionic form okay that means they will be in their ionic form in that solution okay so now here we see so this is the before and this is the final okay but the thing is that here here many is positive ion will be present or many cl negative ion will be present okay but we add a limited amount of uh, sodium hydroxide from that B rate drop wise. Now we add drop wise. So when we add drop wise, then that means we add less amount of sodium hydroxide. So the uh, sodium hydroxide that means sodium and OS negative ion then is positive ion and Cl negative ion. If the concentration of the sodium hydroxide that means this solution and this solutions are almost similar. Okay. If the concentration of sodium hydroxide is very very higher than this one, then it's de it's defined. Okay. So that then then what is going to happen? That uh, let's suppose we add one mole of sodium hydroxide. Let's suppose let's just for uh, you know for let's suppose only. Okay. So let's suppose we only add so one mole of sodium hydroxide. That means we add how many mole of only one mole of sodium hydroxide that means one sodium one mole of sodium positive will be there and one mole of OS negative will be there understand 
so let's suppose there are three mole of is, uh, is positive ions are there and three moles of cl negative ions are present in that acidic medium okay so let's suppose okay. so that means that sodium ion will going to react with or only one chloride ion then two chloride ion will be remain in that uh, so uh, in that beaker which uh, you know unreacted uh, okay so this this two chloride ion will be that means two mole of chloride ion will be remain there okay and uh, that is positive three mole of is positive as are there no? so two mole of is positive will be remain there and this two is going to give you water one mole of water okay but here we know that this will going to form what sodium chloride again we know that sodium chloride will going to dissociate it into their ions because sodium chloride is a salt and we know that strong acid strong base and salt will always uh, be in their ionic form in the aqueous solution so that means in the final in the final uh, that means after adding one mole of sodium hydroxide in a, a solution of hcl in which three mole of is positive and three mole of cl negative is present then how mole of is positive will be be there then this this will going to be removed okay that means finally after the reaction one mole of sodium how many sodium would be there one mole of sodium would be there after the reaction okay and chloride will be three mole of chloride moles of chloride will be there moles of mo three moles of chloride will be there and is positive uh, two moles of two moles of is positive there so this is after after addition of addition of after addition of one mole of sodium hydroxide okay so this is and before before addition of sodium hydroxide how many sodium sodium no how many only is positive three moles three moles of is positive are there and cl negative three moles are there no? so only is positive three moles and cl negative three moles are there in that beaker and after the addition of uh, one mole of sodium hydroxide sodium positive will be one mole cl negative will be three moles and s positive will be into be two moles so the change will be fine chloride will be remain same okay chloride three moles here here three moles before addition of that uh, sodium hydroxide and three moles here also after addition of the uh, but here that is positive one mole of s positive is placed by the one mole of sodium positive ion okay that means here in after addition that means after addition so after this is let's suppose before okay before addition of the sodium hydroxide so before addition of sodium hydroxide two mole of and here sorry two mole of here and here three moles of so number of uh, hydrogen ion will be to decrease after addition of that alkali and if you compare the here this is your after addition no? so here uh, you know chloride ions are remain same no? three moles and three moles so it will not going to uh, the contributions of the chloride ion to the conductivity of the solution will be remain same because there are three moles of chloride will be present and here three moles of chloride will be there so uh, to the the contribution from the chloride ions to the conductivity of the solution after the addition of sodium hydroxide will be remain same okay but the thing is that here two moles or three moles of uh, is positive was pre uh, present uh, before the addition of sodium hydroxide and here two moles of is positive is present okay but if you compare the mobility that means here the number also, also the number is is the number is actually decrease here okay but the number of positive ion is same sodium positive sodium positive is one uh, is positive is two so that means number of positive ion is same three here or here but the mobility of actually is positive ion is higher than the mobility of the sodium positive ion because of their smaller size okay that means 
here the mobility of the S positive ion uh, that means the number is higher okay the, that means here you see S positive ion mobility is higher than the sodium positive that means here uh, the higher mobility ions that means S positive ion is lower that means the number of higher mobility ions is lower than this one that means the conductivity will going to what decrease understand no? because this positive can move fast so and contribution will be coming from tree but here the fast move, moving is moving ion is what is positive okay among sodium positive and is positive and because this will be the number is two here so it will going to contribute less that means the conductivity will going to decrease that's why if you uh, you know if you plot the conductance versus your volume volume of alkali that means here you can add sodium hydroxide added that means the that suppose this is your uh, when zero that means you when you when only is cl is present then let's suppose the conduct con conductance is this one okay when you add the sodium hydroxide then it will going to decrease now because of because sodium hydroxide that means always negative is going to consume that is positive okay so it will going to decrease okay? so now suppose we get that endpoint okay so after the input that means there are no more it is present so no more is positive is present that means all is positive is already consumed by that always negative okay, so that means the endpoint is over okay so additional always negative if you add additional sodium hydroxide that that, that in that case sodium will, sodium positive will not going to contribute to the conductance because the mobility of sodium positive is not so high okay but after the endpoint, if you add more sodium hydroxide, then this OS negative ion also has very good mobility. So that means because of uh, that OS negative, the additional OS negative, if you add more sodium hydroxide, then it is going to produce more OS negative. If you add more and more sodium hydroxide, then it is going to produce more and more OS negative. Then that means because of this higher mobility, it is going to increase the conductivity. Okay understand so conductance will going to again in increase so if you extrapolate these two uh, straight line then these two straight line will going to uh, meet at a point okay and that point is known as your so this is your end point that means this is this point is your neutralization of that HCl by that sodium hydroxide and this volume is actually this point okay this volume this volume is actually the volume of the sodium hydroxide required to neutralize that given solution of HCl. okay hope you understand this first uh, uh, conductometric titration okay so next we are going to discuss about the conductometric titrations between actually the weak acid and strong base okay Let us discuss uh, the second uh, tra uh, tradition which is between weak acid and strong base. Let us consider a weak acid CH3 C double O S and we are going to take the weak acid in the beaker and uh, strong base let's suppose sodium hydroxide and we are going to take that sodium hydroxide in burette ok. So what will be the reaction? so we know that this is your what weak acid so we always know that that uh, weak acid or weak base will not going to dissociate completely into their ions in their aqueous solution okay so that means they will not going to dissociate they will not going to in their dissociated form okay so what we can write we can write the reaction like this ch3 c double o is in aqueous plus <clears throat> here sodium but here sodium hydroxide is in the b rate okay so we write in a uh, square bracket and 
dairy R, but this is what stronger so we can write the ionic formula so sodium positive and OS negative this is aqueous okay so they will going to react with each other but here first acetic acid will going to react with okay so it will going to slightly dissociate it into their ch 3 c double o negative it is aqueous plus that sodium would be remain same okay plus this is an aqueous plus this OS negative will going to react with that is positive and it will going to form liquid okay so now we have uh, this uh, three ion these two ions after the addition of uh, that sodium hydroxide okay so if you uh, if you try to plot the conductance versus your volume of sodium hydroxide added then it will be like you see so in first cases what will going to happen if you add more and more this one then because you know that the acetic acid will not going to contribute to the uh to the you know to the conductance value because it will not going to dissociate it easily okay so this will not going to and also this is the size of this one is not so not so good so it will not going to move faster okay so that means the mobility of this one is not so good so that means let's suppose this is uh, the conductance value before the addition of the sodium hydroxide so when you add sodium hydroxide then what will going to happen uh, sodium positive will going to be there okay and ch 3 cws will be there okay so when we add that sodium hydroxide then after the addition of sodium hydroxide in that uh, solution uh, in that beaker sodium will be sodium positive will be present okay so it will slightly because of that addition of extra sodium positive it will slightly going to improve or increase the conductivity okay but it's not going to uh, give a sharp increment okay so let's suppose after the neutralization of this uh, whole uh, you know acetic acid solution on addition of extra sodium hydroxide we're going to introduce OS negative ion in the beaker okay so on addition more and more sodium hydroxide is going to increase the OS negative ions uh, in that beaker that means again we know that the mobility of the OS ion will be actually is very high and uh, on the addition of extra sodium hydroxide uh, we're going to increase the number of OS negative ion uh, in that beaker so if you add more and more OS uh, sodium hydroxide that means you, the number of OS negative will going to also increase okay so that means it will going to increase the conductance value so if you extrapolate this to straight line then this to straight line will going to meet at a point and this point is again your end point that means that neutralization at this point uh, indicate that this amount of that means this volume of sodium hydroxide can neutralize the given amount of uh, acid okay so by uh, getting the end point we can have the neutralization point of that weak acid and strong base trap pressure okay or neutralization reactions so next we are going to discuss about the reaction between uh, sorry the tradition of a mixture of mixture of strong and weak acid with a strong base so let's suppose in the beaker we're going to take a mixture of acid instead of only one acid so let's suppose here we're going to take hcl and also we're going to take ch3 c double o h okay so we're going to take these two um with these two acid inside this uh, beaker and here from the burette we're going to 
it sodium hydroxide drop was then what would be the nature of the curve okay so let's suppose this is your conductance value and this is your volume of that sodium hydroxide added okay so when we add uh, you know so uh, let's suppose uh, here SCL is there CST CW is that means acetic acid is, is also there but acetic acid is not going to because of that uh, you know low uh, lower amount of um, what your uh, actually this is a weak no? weak acid so it is not going to dissociate it completely into their ions so only the conductance will be because of that is positive ions okay so let's suppose the conductance is this one so when you add sodium hydroxide then the conductance will going to decrease it is already discussed in the case one okay in which the, we already discussed the uh, in the first case we have already discussed that, that uh, the partition between the strong acid that is HCl and sodium hydroxide so similarly it will be like that okay then after the end point <coughs> because of that acetic acid CH3COOH after the addition of sodium hydroxide the sodium positive ion and the CH3COOH negative ion will going to slightly increase the conductance below up to a point so after that neutralization point again under addition of sodium hydroxide OH negative will going to again the extra OS negative that means when we in, in this case the OS negative will going to react to it is positive now it will going to form water okay so it will going to completely uh, uh, you know um, consume this is positive and then after consuming this is positive and the additional OS negative ion is going to uh, again react with this acid and this is positive this is will going to uh, you know consumed by this OS negative ion okay so after consuming this is is of that acetic acid present in this solution okay the extra waste negative would going to increase the conductance value so there will be two uh, endpoints will be there so this is will be for the uh, the, uh, the that is the HCl and this is for the your acetic acid okay so we can get the concentration of this one that means the endpoint uh, this endpoint will going to indicate actually this graph is for HCl versus sodium hydroxide okay so this point and this point is actually for CH3 CWS versus sodium hydroxide okay so hope you understand this uh, point and now coming to the next that is the final uh, conductor metric titrations which is your the titration between strong acid with weak base okay so strong acid with weak base the next one is what strong acid with weak base titration okay conductor metric titration so let's suppose the strong acid is your HCl which is taken in the beaker and weak base is your ammonium hydroxide let's suppose okay so the nature of the curve will be like this one okay you see this let's suppose conductance value and this is the volume of uh, ammonium hydroxide added okay so here the this is let's suppose this is the initial conductance of that uh, uh, you know acidic solution which is uh, present in that beaker and after the addition of ammonium hydroxide ammonium hydroxide is positive will going to what react with sorry OS negative will going to react with that is positive that means that OS negative will going to uh, again first of all this is this will not going to uh, you know dissociate it completely into the end so the reaction will be like this the reaction will be is positive equals plus CL negative equals plus here we are going put this uh, ammonium hydroxide inside a square bracket because we are taking the uh, base in what in 
the beaker okay so they will going to react and they will going to form ammonium positive plus cl negative equals plus water okay so this is liquid so now this uh, they will not going to dissociate completely and after addition of uh, sodium uh, ammonium hydroxide from that buried that OS negative will going to react with S positive that means we will going to consume that S positive okay so if the S positive will going to consume by that OS negative from that ammonium hydroxide then the conductance will going to decrease okay because the conductance is mainly because of that S positive ion it is already discussed in the first case okay so if you don't understand this point then go uh, back to that first uh, case then you will going to understand okay so and after the getting the end point uh, on the addition of ammonium hydroxide will not going to increase the conductance because you see the ammonium hydroxide will not going to dissociate it into their ions because it, this is a weak acid now so after addition of the extra ammonium hydroxide will not going to dissociate it it will only going to react with SCL because of the S positive will be present now so because this S positive will going to actually attack attack this OS negative ion present in that ammonium hydroxide but when this this is already uh, uh, you know at that at this point after the neutralization point no S positive will be present so no S positive will be there to attack that OS negative ion so they will not going to dissociate it that means they will be remain as ammonium hydroxide so their conductance value will be more or less will be a constant okay so maybe a little amount of ammonium hydroxide may be dis uh, dissociated into their ions but it is very very less amount of OS negative will be ion will be uh, you know given by this ammonium hydroxide so it will be more or less constant so at that point uh, at which actually they to, the two straight, straight line will going to meet is your again end point end point that means the neutralization point and the volume corresponding to this point end point is your the volume required that means the volume of the ammonium hydroxide this is the volume of ammonium hydroxide no I mean as I did okay so the volume of ammonium hydroxide which is required to neutralize this given amount of HCl solution okay hope you understand up to this so now uh, the first uh, you know that means the uh, application of conductance measurement which is your conductometric titration is over so the so the next topic is your precipitation titration okay so it is actually similar to as uh, this you know conductometric titration the, all the setups will be same set up the that means the we will want to use the burette that beaker and that electrodes and just instrument that set, set up okay the same setup will be taken but here uh, in the titration what will going to happen some precipitation will going to occur okay so let's discuss about that one okay okay so let's suppose this one is your precipitation tension okay okay this should be ti okay this should be ti tra one tritation okay. not tritation titration sorry for the mistake okay. so precipitation precipitation titration precipitation titration so uh, we have already I have already told you that the setup should be same okay so let us uh, suppose silver positive that means let's suppose we're going to take silver nitrate silver nitrate inside the beaker so it will be there will be silver positive NO3 negative will be there many silver positive ion will be there many NO3 uh, negative ion will be present in that beaker okay so we're going to add potassium nitrate potassium chloride uh, from the buret okay and here 
the electrode will be there and we will be able to measure the conductance value okay so here the reaction will be like this okay silver is in your it will be in ionic form in that aqueous medium and the nitrate will be also in uh, that solution uh, in the form of ions and uh, it will be going to react to it plus what a square bracket because it is in the burette so you have to put it in square bracket plus cl negative aqueous okay because it's just salt no? for the sample right so they will be always in their early form so after reaction of this uh, two they will silver will going to react with that chloride and they will going to give a white precipitate okay? white ppt actually you have already did this uh, type of reaction in inorganic salt analysis okay to detect chloride and to get to that this is a witness no? so this one plus potassium plus plus no3 negative equals okay so this is your basically the uh reaction okay which is going to occur during that radiation process so now when you will going to add the, the potassium chloride solution then what will going to happen what about that curve so this is let's suppose conductance and this is the volume of uh, your potassium chloride volume of potassium chloride added that means added potassium chloride so you can go here if you see this uh, graph then what will happen when you are going to add the potassium chloride then what will be going to happen actually the actually the potassium uh, the mobility of the potassium ion and the and that of your silver ion is actually quite same okay they are their mobility is almost same same so they the conductivity will not going to become uh, the, that means the conductivity will be uh, more or less same okay that means this the mobility of this one will be same as this one no? so because uh, when we add potassium chloride in that solution then potassium will be there no? that means one when one mole of silver positive will going to consume by that uh, cl negative then it will simultaneously going to add uh, one mole of pot potassium positive ion in that uh, solution so again that uh, potassium the mobility of the potassium will be same as that mobility of the silver ion that means the number <coughs> the that means when we uh, when silver positive one silver positive will be going to consume by that potassium chloride then one mole of potassium positive will be going to uh, you know um, uh, going to be in that solution so that means the number will be same okay so and that means one number of silver positive will be going to replace by one mole of potassium positive that means number will be the same and also that mobility will be going to mobility of this one and this one is same so that means conductance is constant okay and after the addition after the neutralization point actually under addition of that potassium chloride potassium chloride um, actually it will going to increase the uh, <coughs> increase the um, conductance because if you add more and more potassium chloride then what will happen it will going to produce cl negative and potassium positive and they are actually they have some good mobilities okay so they they will going to increase the uh you know this uh, uh conductance value okay so if you extrapolate this to straight line then the point at which these two point will going this two uh straight line will going to meet is your end point and the end point which indicates the neutralization point that means this amount of that means this <clears throat> volume of potassium chloride is required to neutralize that given amount of silver nitrate solution okay hope you understand uh, this uh, um, precipitation titration tit titration so actually up to this you have to 
so okay so there are actually many um, you know there are many disadvantages uh, or many advantages uh, there are many advantages uh, are there many advantages are there for conductor metric tradition that actually conductor metric tradition have has uh, many advantages uh, then you know that acid base tradition that means if you compare these two then conductometric titrations win the battle okay so so what is the advantages advantages of conductometric metric titration okay So let us uh, discuss about the advantages of conductor metric titration. Okay. So there are mainly uh, three types of uh, actually three advantages are there. Okay. So first one is you cannot use acid based titration uh, if the solution is color. Okay. Solution if the if the solution has some color. So you cannot use because it is basis it is it is uh, depends upon the color color change. So if the solution itself have, itself has some color, then it will not going to uh, you know uh, show you the change of color. So you cannot use that acid based titration in such cases. So but uh, you know conductant conductometric titration you can do because you can calculate the um, conductivity value even if the solution is colorful okay so the first advantage is uh, we can use conductometric titration even for color electrolytic solution solution so color solution so if the solution is colorful then also we can use the conductor metric titration okay so this is the first advantage and the second advantage is your okay so we uh, you know you, you you should not pay any attention or you should not be if you are not uh, you should not be you know careful at that end point in case of that means if you are not if you are not careful in case of acid based titration at the time of end point you can miss that end point okay let's suppose uh, you are doing that acid based titration okay so this is your acid solution here some indicator is there and this is your burette and from by using which you will going to get dropwise the base solution okay so let's suppose you, at the end point uh, you are not careful or you you, you 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 did not pay attention okay so if by accident if or accidentally you add one more drop of sodium hydroxide then you will going to get some error okay that means you have to add only one drop let's suppose this is your solution okay so this is indicator so it's only require only one drop to become uh, you know to neutralize the solution so let's suppose you put that drop and you get that color but you uh, you are not uh, so attentive at that time so uh, accidentally you add one more drop in that solution then the volume reading will be different now there will be some error so you must be you must have pay attention at the time of uh, that end point okay uh, when you are carrying out this acid based titration but in case of uh, uh, you know that uh, conductor metric tradition it is not like that because you can just you have to plot 
the data na? so you, you can uh, you can plot that data and you will going to get that endpoint by just plotting that data so uh, it is not uh, you know if you are not attentive to uh, at the point of that endpoint that also you're going to get the proper result okay so this is the second point third point is and uh, there is a third point which is actually even you can uh, even you can use uh, the conductor metric titration to for uh, in case of weak electrolytes weak electrolytes okay weak electrolytes also uh, because in case of uh, if you use weak electrolytes in you know acid based titration then you may not get the good result because you know weak electrolyte will not going to give you uh, the ions easily okay and the acid based titration uh, if you if if you, if the if the weak elect if you use weak electrolytes that's suppose weak acid in that beaker that means they have very less amount of uh, positive ion will be there no? or the very less amount of negative ion will be there so you cannot use that this this procedure okay if you add a, a, a one drop then even you can get that you, you, you can even exit that input because there are very little amount of is uh, little amount of ions will be there because that weak electrolyte will not going to dissociate it if the weak electrolyte is not going to dissociate into their ions then that there will be no any ions if there will be no any ions then there uh, then the sodium hydroxide will not going to that means the sodium hydroxide that, that sodium hydroxide will, will not going to react with any ions okay understand so if that means the one drop is sufficient to change the color. Okay, understand. That means that means we cannot use that acid base tritations for weak electrolytes. Okay, uh, but here, uh, but in case of weak electrolyte, we can use that conductometric tritation. Okay, because uh, we have already discussed the the second uh, cases where we used weak electrolyte that is weak acid with uh, against uh, strong base okay and we we can get that graph from that uh, experiment and by using that graph we can get that endpoint and by uh, you know knowing that endpoint we can get that information of how much volume is going to be used or how much volume is required that is strong how much volume of the strong base is required to and utilize that weak acid okay so interesting we, we can so these points are very interesting now so we can use this conductometric titrations uh, for different uh, you know solutions or different solutions which cannot be uh, done in acid based titration okay so this this actually these three are the main advantages of uh, conductor metric traditions over acid based traditions. Hope you understand. So in next class we're going to study a new topic. Okay.